And I was shocked that Charity like didn't put her hair in a ponytail or anything before they started driving. I'm fully convinced they had full hair and makeup tagging along behind them to fix after the ride. Hi everyone, my name is Dimitri and welcome back to Dimitri Tube, The Bachelorette, night two. Let's talk about it. As always, if you're enjoying my videos, please go ahead and pound that like button, pound that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell. I'm a growing YouTuber and the likes and subscribes really help me out. I apologize to all of you for the delay on this video. For 4th of July, I was the grill daddy. I was in charge of the grill and I was in charge of the potato salad. And if you've never been in Washington, D.C., this has been a very humid July so far and I was completely drained after. And I also had too much whiskey. But now I am back and I am ready to talk about a brand new episode. And just one more thing before we get started. So apparently during the commercials, I think it was Warwick. Warwick basically had his own commercial and not like a commercial right before the show airs or like right after we go to break. Apparently like randomly in the middle, he had his own commercial. Please clock me in the comments if it wasn't Warwick, but I think it was him. And this was on episode one. I didn't know until later on when I was listening to some re other reviews and reading things about the show. But anyways, I just wanted to mention that because that is a huge giveaway to me that he will probably be the next Bachelor, but we'll just have to wait and see. Okay, now let's dive into the review. Okay, so first, just a few things I wanna talk about from the intro. Charity's green leather jacket was really cute. I think black would have been way more sleek and classic, but I still got some love for this green jacket. Next, drag me in the comments, I don't care. I love seeing a man in a cowboy hat. But I will say, so Caleb's bio says he's from Orlando, and Orlando is not country at all. Orlando is a suburb with Disney World on the outskirts. But it's possible he moved there from somewhere else as a jumpstart to his wrestling career, so we don't know. And in general, it's way better when an actual country guy wears a cowboy hat, but if he's from like Boston or something, or if he's just wearing it because he's trying to make it in Hollywood as a wrestler, it, it doesn't have the same effect, but it's still hot. Next, during the intro, Brayden looks like a classic boy. Would y'all date a guy who wore earrings like this? Let me know below in the comments. And lastly, one of the contestants named Michael is a yacht captain, but in Chicago, Illinois. So I have questions. Is he only working like three months out of the year? Like how long is yacht season in Chicago? Because it gets cold there quickly. Like I feel like when they say they have 90 days of summer, it truly is 90 days. So what is he doing the other days of the year? After that, we get our first one-on-one -on -one with Aaron B. For this date, Charity's outfit was fun, but it was a little simple. So for the date, they ride in a classic convertible top down. I couldn't tell if it was an Audi or a Mustang though. And I was shocked that Charity like didn't put her hair in a ponytail or anything before they started driving. I'm fully convinced they had full hair and makeup tagging along behind them to fix after the ride. And then at one point when they were riding, Aaron and Charity were late on how they both like old school music. And I thought this was so lame. So this is just a personal thing. I am so tired of the nostalgia and the old music. Like, don't get me wrong. I like old music, but there is such amazing new music out now, but it's just tougher to find. And when people in their late 20s and early 30s say they don't really like new music, they like old music, to me, that's a sign you're getting old and you can't keep up with the kids no more. Anyways, after that, Aaron B and Charity go up to the Hollywood sign and they sip some champagne in front of it. I thought this date was really lame. Did y'all like this date? Is this something you would like to do? So I'm probably just a hater or something, but a lot of things in LA are just so gimmicky to me. And like going to see the Hollywood sign just seems so gimmicky. Like I would rather go, go see the observatory, that really nice observatory there. Like I think I would rather do that than go see the Hollywood sign. I don't know what it is. I'm probably just a hater, but like going to see the Hollywood sign or going to see the stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame or just going to Venice Beach, it all just seems so gimmicky like I'm just not really feeling it like I I would have rather them chosen something not maybe maybe I guess not as 
famous i don't i don't know i don't know where i'm getting at here anyways after that we moved to the night portion and i absolutely love charity's overcoat it was very 90s i didn't love her dress i thought her dress was okay also i couldn't tell if it was black or if it was a dark red and we don't really learn anything new about aaron or charity but they do get a performance from Lauren Elena. And overall, this was a really good date. I wouldn't have wanted to go on this specific date, but overall, it was a good date. And when it comes to the chemistry between Aaron and Charity, I'm just not seeing it. Like I said in my last review, Aaron and Charity, like on paper, would make sense. But when they're together, I'm just really not seeing the spark. But in their defense, during that performance with Lauren Elena, some of those kisses were very passionate. I'm starting to think that Charity just really Really enjoys kissing next if you made it this far in the video please go ahead and pound that like button for the YouTube algorithm okay now we're moving on to the first group date and for the group date we get to do the fourth annual Dodge Bowl and I'm still very much shocked that ABC is getting away with this when Yosef has a daughter at home. But during this group date, I must give ABC some kudos. ABC did a very good job. All of the guys I thought looked really good in the Speedos. Like they put the A team on this group date. And not only that, the game from what we saw seemed to be evenly matched. Like it was anyone's game and they, and both sides had very athletic people. I feel like when the games are done on The Bachelor, most of the time one team completely blows out the other and it's like not very exciting. And just a couple things I wanna say about the game itself, Xavier killed it. The more I'm seeing of Xavier, the more I'm liking him. I'm, I'm really liking Xavier. And then the guys were having a lot of fun. They really got into this game and both teams really wanted to win. I think everyone should have gone to the cocktail party, personally. Like, this should have been one of those everyone gets to go. And then after that, we move on to the night portion of the date. And yep, it's that time, outfit of the episode. For this week's outfit of the episode, I'm giving it to Charity during the night portion of the group date. Charity is wearing this black and white, like, plaid pattern crop top with matching pants and the pants are like bell bottoms she looks amazing and this very much reminds me of dion from clueless like i'm gonna look look up that outfit and see how close they are and i will admit i don't love this outfit like to me the fashions this episode weren't that great i'm just i'm ready for some like over the top type of fashion y'all know that's the type of fashion i want to see she had really cute chill outfits throughout the episode but i'm ready for that over the top glam something where i look at it and i'm like oh my god i can never afford this and during the night portion of this date we don't really see a lot of one-on-ones i think john had one but it was nothing memorable to me and then charity and brayden had a one-on-one -on -one. charity acts like a little schoolgirl when she's around brayden like she she gets so giggly and like almost uh, she gets so giggly and like a little shy around him. And I just feel like if Charity and Brayden had a year and a half, they could possibly work, but they only have six weeks. So I really, it's just not enough time for them. Like I just don't see them really reaching serious relationship or even engagement status in six weeks. I just don't see it. And did Adrian borrow Charity's jacket for this group date? It looks like the same jacket, just in a different color. Also, Adrian and Brayden had a little bit of drama, but I'm gonna save that till the end of the review. Now we're moving on to group date number two, and we are introduced again to Gabby and Rachel. And y'all, Gabby went blonde. She's LA now. Also, I love how Gabby and Rachel are still put together because I'm pretty sure Rachel would rather do stuff on her own, but the problem is she can't really carry it on her own. And also, why are Gabby and Rachel giving advice? Both of their relationships flopped. But seeing Gabby, Rachel, and Charity on stage, to me, it looked like a group, a small group of house sorority moms. Did anyone else think that or just me? Anyway, so for the date, basically Gabby and Rachel and Charity were like hosts of the celebrity dating show and they brought the guys on stage. They asked them questions. They made them kiss their hands and they made them share their stories of their best kiss. So just a few things I want to say about this. First, Charity's outfit was cute 
but the dress was just a little too busy for me. Next, apparently there's a contestant named John Henry, and y'all, he looks like Colton Underwood's baby brother, but with a Southern accent. Next, and y'all know my fave this season, Josh. He's so hot, but he's just a little too corny and too mushy. And Joey ended up winning the game, but I thought his best kiss story was really lame. Like, I definitely would have picked Warwick over him. I thought Warwick's story was just cuter, and also Warwick Warwick just has that, Warwick has a very sexy deep voice, so I usually would have chose him over Joey. Anyways, since Joey won, he got the opportunity to break the longest kissing record on The Bachelor with charity or something. And I will say, I didn't love this. Like, it was great. They got an opportunity to kiss, but like, this was like a little weird. So apparently the record was like three minutes and like 30 32 seconds or something so they went for like four minutes and 25 seconds and there was like an audience there watching and cheering them on and then you have Rachel and Gabby cheering them on this is just kind of weird like when I when I see people making out in public like I kind of just keep it pushing like I, I don't stop there and watch like I actually feel weird if I'm watching because I, I don't know I feel like that's an intimate moment between them like let them have it I don't need to like watch and cheer them on after that Joey gets a one-on-one -on -one with Charity later that night and we find out that Joey's dad is gay and his dad came out when he was in kindergarten, which later led to his parents getting divorced. But even though they were divorced, they lived in a, uh, he grew up in a family with a ton of love from both sides. And I kind of wish Charity had asked this, but I wonder how many dads Joey has now. Like, did his mom remarry? So that would be one dad. And then if his dad remarried too, he would have three dads. Like, I'm surprised Charity didn't ask that. I, I would have asked that. And then, and when it comes to Joey and Charity, I'm not seeing a ton of chemistry. I, I still just think Charity just thinks he's pretty. After that, we move on to the barbecue and we get a one-on-one -on -one with Doton and Charity. And for the one-on-one, -on -one, Doton shows Charity his resident alien card and he tells her about how it's one of his most precious possessions. And in response to this, let me just say, happy 4th of July, everyone, to freedom. Because remember, everyone wants to be us. I don't know what country Doton is from, but he is so happy and so blessed that he is now a part of this great American country. And we love to see it. And then when it comes to Doton and Charity's chemistry, I'm just really not seeing it. I think Charity likes the fact that he's very tall. Like I think, a lot of women like tall guys, and Doton is, like, ridiculously tall. Anyways, I think Charity really likes the fact that Doton is very tall. She probably feels, like, safe and comfortable with him. But honestly, outside of that, I'm just not seeing a very big connection here. Next, we have a one-on-one -on -one with Charity and Tanner. Nothing really notable there. I think he just reiterates why he's there for the right reasons or something. But I will say, Charity and Tanner are a very cute couple. Like, just looks-wise... I think they look very cute together. Next, Charity's heels were really cute. Okay, now let's dive into the Brayden and Adrian. So at the top of the episode, Adrian alludes to the fact that there are guys here that are possibly not here for the right reasons. And then later on, during the night portion of the first group date, Adrian was on the losing team during the dodgeball game, but he was nominated as MVP. So during the night portion, Brayden tells Adrian that he didn't think he deserved MVP and there were better players on the field. And then Adrian responds to him and says he doesn't think he's there for the right reasons and it's a spring break for him. And Adrian definitely took this pretty personally for no reason. And I was team Brayden at this point because when Brayden said that, it wasn't anything personal. He saw the talent on the field and he felt like you didn't deserve MVP and yet somehow you got it. And yeah, Brayden could have kept that thought to himself, but whatever, we need some storylines. And this could have been squashed so easily, but none of the other guys wanted to jump in. Like all of you were at the dodgeball game on the best team. You know who played the best. Like some Somebody, I, I kind of wish somebody had jumped in and either agreed with Brayden or said somebody else should have gotten MVP because from the edit we saw, 
it didn't look like Adrian deserved MVP either. And then Adrian reiterates that he didn't come to just kick it here with the guys. But Adrian reiterating this is very dumb because what else are you supposed to do when you're not on a date? As we all know, when you're on this show, you spend more time with the other contestants than you do the actual lead. So like, what is Adrian expecting? Are you supposed to just sit around and just be mad at everyone? And again, if you've watched previous seasons, if everyone in the house doesn't like you, that's probably not going to work in your favor either. And overall, Adrian is just a weak ass villain. So then later on in the episode, after the second group date, when the guys hear about what happened during the longest kiss, Brayden says he would have walked away mad. And Adrian and him get into like another small argument. And overall, it just seems like Adrian just has a problem with Brayden. Like, I don't really know what the problem is, but Adrian just, I don't think he just doesn't like him. And then during the barbecue, Brayden is wearing another pair of boy earrings and he's basically like talking himself into elimination like Brayden just talks a little too much and sometimes he says things that could easily be used against him and one of the things he says Aiden does try to use it against him and Brayden also did not believe that Charity forced the other guys who were on that date to watch the longest kiss between her and Joey and Brayden felt like that was kind of disrespectful. So he says he's going to find out the truth. So Brayden decides to pack his bags and he's going to confront Charity about it. And if he doesn't like what he hears, he's going to go home. So Brayden and Charity have a one-on-one. -on -one. It's fine. Charity says that longest kiss thing was like not malicious by any means. And Brayden essentially told Charity, like he questioned her character because of that. Like, honestly, this whole thing was like pretty extra and then adrian and charity have a one-on-one -on -one. and sidebar adrian and charity look very good together as well just like from a look standpoint i think they look really good together and adrian apologizes for bringing up those spring break comments earlier and he also tells charity that he's gonna bring her any information that's useful from the house so basically adrian is the snitch in the house so we all know he's not gonna win because the lead never picks the snitch it's just it's not a good look and then after that we move on to the rose ceremony and there's just a few things i want to mention first brayden gives us another pair of boy earrings this man literally has earrings for every occasion and then at the end of the episode brayden does a toast and he clearly did that toast just to rub it in adrian's face that he was still in the competition and i love that moment i love when people recognize it's a competition and do things like that like i i really like that moment and for the eliminations there really were no upsets except for me josh got eliminated i just i just thought he was really hot i wish he could have stayed longer and colton underwood's baby brother also got eliminated i i would have liked to see a little more of him but also he was reminding me of colton underwood so i'm really not that mad and that is the end of the episode and the end of this review. If you enjoyed this review, please go ahead and pound that like button, pound that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell, and I will see you all next time. Have a good one. Bye.